can tell I'm a bit intimidated by this task. <laughs> minutes slow rising Gigi add a bit of yeast it's a recorder <laughs> 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 Welcome back to The Average. Today I am doing a collaboration with Scribble Fix and we decided to do this collaboration where we swap a Pinterest board with each other and we have to try and make an illustration from this mood board, inspiration reference board. This idea was kind of stolen from Dina Lawland and um, Gel Art, so if you like this idea then they've done it as well and I will link their projects down below but also I will obviously link Scribble Fix and you can go watch her version of this video and see what I sent her down below. I have the mood board here that she sent me and I didn't look at it, I was like opened it and then tried to cover it as quickly as possible, that's why this is here. What I'm trying to do is I'm gonna look at it now and reveal what she has sent me. My iPad is a little bit too big to fit in this camera angle. Ready? Reveal. Oh, I like these colours so far. That's the first takeaway that I'm getting from this. Mm. There's lots of tea and coffee um, and cups. I love these colours, wow. If you watch my channel, I love blues and purples a lot. So this is kind of my cup of tea. So this isn't usually what I would pick out for myself, which is obviously the whole point of doing this project. So this is going to be really fun. After a short delay, I realised how to open this board on the app, which made a lot more sense than just viewing it through Twitter. So yeah, I was saying there's lots of lovely flowers here, which I am quite excited to draw. And I think that is something that I really like doing, so she kind of got that side of me and the colour side, which is quite good. I mean, I know the point isn't to <laughs> get something people like, but something that would inspire, but I think I'm feeling pretty inspired and the cups of tea. I'm definitely feeling the pressure though, because I'm like, what do I draw? I am kind of getting a Alice in Wonderland vibe a little bit, you know, the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Maybe that could be something that I could do. This is hard, man. I didn't think it was going to be this hard. I was like, yeah, this is going to be super easy. So maybe I can do Mad Hatter's Tea Party, but like the top view. So something like this, but then including like lots of flowers and maybe an alternative um, Mad Hatter's Tea Party with cactuses and things that you wouldn't usually see. So today I'm not really sure what medium I'm going to be using, but I found this Koi watercolour um, travel set which I'm going to take on my holidays because I'm going on holiday soon and I thought I would use this just to get some practice in but then I also found for 5 euros these metallic colours so that might be quite fun in this because I see some metallic-y colours coming out in this like on the teapots and stuff and these candles so that might be quite fun to play around with but I'm not sure because I haven't tested these out yet, so maybe they're not gonna be very nice. Okay, let's get to sketching, shall we? The sun is right in my eye. Why is that there? I find that the most challenging thing sometimes is being intimidated by a project and we always put it off or maybe just not enjoy the process and that's my mantra is like you have to enjoy what you're doing otherwise people will see that you're not enjoying it and it will show through in your work so I thought what I would do is just you know take this opportunity to just be relaxed about this and try and use this opportunity to just um, clear the air and get rid of some of my maybe my art block that I've been suffering from a little bit and yeah I think this is a really fun project and I don't know where to put my <laughs> references. I think I'm gonna put them over here. Um, this iPad is too big. So there's lovely lots of cactuses and stuff like that. So I was thinking that I would just do like a little garden piece with, with teacups and things around and just have fun with it really because like I said, that's the whole point of doing what you wanna do as a hobby. I mean, of course this isn't a hobby for everybody, but I think we get that pressure of, I need to make this perfect, and sometimes that can be really self-sabotage, self-sabotaging, 
and a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy you know what I mean you look at something and you're like oh that's going to be difficult so you make it difficult for yourself can you tell I'm a bit intimidated by this task <laughs> yes yes I am so I wanted to just like a weird pattern I think where we see like cactuses and teapots and teacups and I think that will look really cool so I think I'm just gonna draw that but sort of in my style and take take apart the references and pick what I like and use use what I, I see and what I like what I like most from this uh, this set of images that Scribble Fix has been kind enough to send me yeah and I definitely want to pick out like these colors yeah I do like the idea of uh, the Mad Hatter's tea party that I had so let's see if that comes to fruition fruition is that what I meant do I mean fruition what is words? What is life? It's kind of got this uh, juxtaposition of nice things, but also like sharp objects as well, which is quite fun, isn't it? I don't know if I like this idea though. <laughs> I like the idea of doing the Mad Hatter's tea party a little bit more. Well, look at the little mash. You gotta put him in there. So he can be, the hell is this monstrosity? <laughs> what have I done? You know, sometimes you make mistakes into a cactus. I mean it could be Alice in Wonderland be overrun with plants and cactuses because you know it's a pretty weird place so maybe somebody cast a spell and made it have lots of cactuses around it I don't know maybe it's been hundreds of years since the Mad Hatter's Tea Party and nobody has come across this place kind of got this idea to make it a little bit more abstract tea so the tea is just floating up into the sky and something magical is happening in this place I'm imagining it is the Mad Hatter's old table, but so this is kind of the table here, but I want to overrun it with things. The idea of using similar but different colours pencils in this as a base layer and then going over with watercolours, I think it will look quite nice. I think there's not very much composition to this piece. It's not it's not been thought out very well by me, but it's interesting, so that's something, right? I think if you watch Scribble Art's uh, video, you'll see what I picked for her was sort of similar in the sense that it had a bit of a theme. And I'm glad that I did a theme because it seems like she gave me, you know, it's been pretty thought out on her end as well. <clears throat> I think with her one that I sent her, I don't want to spoil anything, but I think I sent a lot of images with a lot of uh, well-placed open space because in illustration it's very good to have a place for the eyes to rest right so that's something that I want to think about in this piece so maybe I'll just make this the table as you can see it's kind of a bit of an abstract table um, view and I quite like the way that it's coming out I quite like that essence of it if that makes sense uh, where it's not really it's not really making sense of perspective is obviously off and um, but I think it works in the sense of illustration, it just it conveys a feeling. This is quite fun to make. So I think what I want to do is just have open space here, because I can see as well in the imagery that she sent me, some things that I like is just here, you can see that it's just a pink, bluey pink sky, and then the rest is just complete crazy hecticness, but it just gives your mind a little breathing area up here so in the sense of composition I think that's a good idea especially if I've got this really hectic thing going on down here but I want to make it super hectic like it is in that image I think what I want is darkness here blue light but maybe I should for the sake of this challenge use the blue light a good trick to make it look like you have lots of plants I read is just to do abstracty shapes in the background that are similar to what you've done in the foreground so you don't have to keep drawing the same uh, set of trees over and over, but it makes it seem like abundance of um, leaves and foliage. Okay, I think I'm ready to start sort of colouring it. Um, so let's get my watercolours out. So I think what I want to do is block out this colour first, and I did like the way that that came out, so I'm going to copy that sort of lilac -y light blue colour, or try to anyway. Again, I'm just layering colours, I'm just going to have fun with it, I'm just going to try and build it up as much as I can. If there's buckling, there's buckling, you know what I mean? You make mistakes, you learn from them. Sometimes mistakes can be quite nice as well, um, you never know. Like, I think sometimes buckling and texture 
from paints being messy kind of adds to a piece sometimes. I think like texture, we're too afraid to be too perfect and well I am anyway so I'm trying to do this thing where I care less about each piece and you just go for it and you just see what what happens and let your mind kind of be free instead of overthinking things because that's something that I definitely tend to do is that I just I just think oh I need to make this really amazing piece because you know people are watching or, or I'm gonna put it on Instagram and I think that in a sense can be really poisonous and detrimental to your artistic journey because if you're constantly thinking that way then you're not making art for yourself and I think that's the most important thing is to love what you're doing and if you don't love it then it definitely shows and sometimes I draw stuff and I just never post it to Instagram and I think that's a really healthy attitude like if I have art block and or if I'm feeling the pressure then I'm like okay so no matter I think to myself no matter what the outcome of this piece is even if I really love it I'm gonna promise myself that I'm not gonna post it to Instagram or online because then it's for myself and next time it will take the pressure off if I say like oh I don't have to post this to Instagram it kind of it puts in your head like oh there's no pressure then you know what I mean so if you ingrain if you start thinking that way then I think it's really helpful so with this piece obviously I know that I'm gonna be putting it up on YouTube but that's absolutely fine because I've been trying to put in my head like nope just go with it if it turns out bad it turns out bad but at the moment I'm kind of I am liking it and I'm enjoying the process, especially the colouring stage. I hope that advice kind of helps anybody struggling. Just don't put so much pressure on yourself is what I'm trying to say in in, in the briefest ways. <laughs> I think for me it's been um, hard because trying to balance my new working life with drawing because I used to draw, you know, every single day and paint and try to make that my career but... Um, now that I'm a graphic designer, I sort of go in to work and I spend a long day doing creative work there. So when I come home, I feel like I feel like all my energy for being creative has been used up already. So it's hard for me, but I think that I've gotten into this rhythm of just drawing, you know, what maybe watching something on TV and just drawing, doodling something in the background. I think that is a really good way to to just get back into it rather than making it a big issue like um, I don't need to make a whole massive illustration I could just doodle something I think <laughs> I hope I'm making some sort of sense to people out there I'm just yeah like I said just building up layers and blocking out shapes within this piece as well like that's something I really like to do is find parts of the image and just like block out bits I think that looks really nice I hope you like this sort of chatty chill vibe of video I've decided not to overly edit it. If I say anything dumb, I may edit that out. Um, but yeah, this is going to be here and it's probably going to be quite long because I haven't done one of those in a while and I think just chatting and not trying to overly edit stuff sometimes is nice. Um, and I like to get a good mixture of different things like that. I do feel like I want to make this black around here. I have a feeling that mine and Scribble Arts' stuff is going to be very different um, conceptually and um, technically because I feel like our stuff's very different so it'll be interesting to see what she comes up with and I'm excited to know. It's always the best part of collaboration is to s like waiting to see what the other person has done. I always really like that and like how they took the ideas that you've maybe given them. So this is the final piece and I really I am glad that I did block out it in black because I think that it just makes all the colours pop a little bit better and I really like the way that it turned out. As I said I was just having fun with it and I was layering different things and I just think it just really works and I'm so glad that Scribble Fix sent me this sent me this artboard that's the final piece. Thanks for watching guys. Please like and subscribe for more content and I will see you next time. Bye. I have the winner of the competition and I'm sorry that I couldn't give away something to everybody because I am truly grateful for all of you watching. But the winner of the competition is Brain Fog. And if you could just message me somehow on one of the social medias, I will forward you all the prizes. Thanks guys for taking part and I really appreciate all your really nice comments.